Right, there are three sensors involved in the operation of this thing. There's two Hall effect sensors, one here, one there. They are operated by the two eccentric cams either side, which have got neodymium magnets embedded in them. You can just see the patch of the magnet there. As this comes round, the magnetic field triggers this, switches it on, this puts an earth out. Once it passes, the earth goes off. Moves 180 degrees, other one comes on, once magnet's gone by, pulse goes. Now those pulses fire up this solenoid here. And they're timed to occur just as it starts to come back on its return journey. So if you watch the light, that's now fired. This is now on, the solenoid is on, pulling the plunger into its core. Now it goes right to the end of the core, so it's just flush there. And then this infrared vein here, this infrared beam rather, is broken by the vein. That switches the power off. The momentum of the flywheel carries it on through, starts to turn, comes back, and now the other one fires. That again draws the core, draws the plunger into the core. This beam is again broken just at the right time and momentum again carries it out, turns and comes back again. And then the whole cycle continues over. Now, you may have noticed that these only flash momentarily. <coughs> they come on just as it starts to go back, but soon after they switch off. So what they actually fire is they come in the circuit board here. This is the uh, hall sensor's input. And they go to a latch circuit. Now the latch circuit is such that once one event outside will trigger it, but a different event will switch it off. Now these are the two which trigger the thing to come on. The beam being broken here switches it off. Now fortunately, because the position where I need it to be off is always the same, depending which direction it's come from, it means I can just use the one sensor for switching off. Now once this comes on, this supplies battery to this PWM circuit here. PWM is um, pulse width modulation, which is basically chopping the DC up into sections. And if you vary how much time it is on to how much time it is off, you then get a control of how much flux is in there, and that ultimately controls the speed. If you alter the speed on the volume here, on the uh, old volume control, you then alter the, the, the ratio between on and off and you get more flux and it speeds up accordingly. The lights here incidentally are just test lights. That one tells me when one of the Hall effect triggers is fired and this one is connected to the base of the power transistor. Now the, the output from here once this, is, once this trigger is activated, it supplies battery, or if you like, positive power to the treble five timer chip here, which is wired as a PWM. That then gives its output to this power transistor, which then powers the solenoid. Then, say, once the beam is broken, it triggers the latch, switches it off, power from there goes, this switches off, no more power in the solenoid. Now, the the, the whole of the circuit here is 12 volts apart from the power transistor. Part of that is working on 40 volts because of the solenoid is either a 40 or 50 volt solenoid. Now what we've got there is we've got the base circuit of the power transistor in the 12 volt circuit and then we've got the, the collector and the emitter you know, on working on 40 volts because they're in circuit with the solenoid and they share a common neutral. Diode is there simply to protect the power transistor from back EMF from there, that's all. Most of the um, components are just off the shelf stuff, uh, just basic aluminium bar. This was rather a large piece of bar which had to be turned down. Just about barely managed to get that in the lathe. Uh, these are originally two inch aluminium bar which is just drilled for eccentric and another hole drilled in for the camshaft. 
the smaller blob which you can see is a securing pin just uh, position it this was originally two inch aluminium bar which has been sort of fairly well fairly well adapted machined and uh, the styling was just put on on the uh, using the mill brass brass all the journals are brass inside them are roller bearings for, to cut down the friction same with the crank that one's in roller bearings as well these are all brass in there is um, plastic bush bearings which is UPCW I think something along those lines it's a special plastic which is used for bearings quite long life this is um, what we call in the UK silver steel I think the Americans call it drill rod it's fairly hard it will easily cope with what we're doing here this this and this are all toughenel and same with that as well and just made a holder up to put the infrared cells in circuit wires we've just got basically the ordinary old control power transistor three treble five timer chips and these all use individual circuits which are available on the web and just couple them together that's all this is a Schmidt trigger the output from there isn't a very clean on off instead of going on off it, it's on and then it will slowly go to off the voltage will drop rather than the sudden digital drop so this cleans the pulse up you can put a dirty pulse in but you get a nice clean on off out and that's what switches the latch off